so uh, the um, topic of this talk will be a new uh, writing direction in writer, uh, writing from bottom to top, left to right. And you will learn why this is a useful thing and how. Hmm. Is there a typo? Uh huh. Yeah. Bottom to right. Yeah. You should just uh, uh, spell it out and it does not feel like a typo. So, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, Miklos Schweina, I'm from Hungary, I work for Collabora, and um, uh, for the purpose of this talk, um, um, I'm mostly things around writer. Uh, so, the way this looks like is normally for Latin tags we um, write, we start at the top left corner of a page and start writing to the right. And once one line is full, then we go down and again start from the left and um, we write towards the right edge of the page. Now, this is typical for Latin text and uh, for other text, uh, this is not so typical. Um, one very common example is Japanese text where you write uh, vertically as opposed to the horizontal direction of Latin text. So you write uh, from the top to towards the bottom and once a line is full, then you go to the left and again from top to the bottom. So it's, a, it's writing from uh, top to bottom and then from right to left. Now, uh, even if uh, writing uh, vertical scripts are typically right uh, to left, uh, it's possible to also have a vertical script which is from left to right. Uh, this um, uh, traditional Mongolian layout was already supported in Writer, which does this. It's a vertical script, but it goes from the left to the right. But always uh, from left to right or from the top to bottom, but never from this out direction than writing from the bottom to the top. Um, now you might ask what crazy language needs this writing from the bottom to the top. And of course, the, um, there are languages which use this script. So if you do your research on the internet, then you, you can find that in, in um, Indonesia and in the Philippines, there are about three minority languages which actually use this direction. But this is not really a motivation factor to add support for this. Uh, the, the real motivation is that uh, you can have um, a table cell or um, a shape, a text framing writer with Latin text. And let's just take two table cells. Uh, you have some large table with Latin text, and um, uh, you have several rows, and you want to have row headers. And that means that on the first column, you want to have some left, uh, some text which is rotated to the left. And in technically, that will be exactly this bottom to the top, left to right direction. So this is why uh, this was uh, more interesting. Um, and of course, a word uh, supports this direction, so it makes sense to uh, improve writer to be on par with word in this regard. Uh, similarly, not only for uh, table saws, also for writer text frames, it's possible to uh, have this uh, rotate to the right or rotate to the left direction. Um, a real world use case was like. Um, um, having some meeting and then we have these uh, papers with printed names and typically the name is printed on both sides so if you are the person who are trying to find your place then you know you can read your name and also the attendees see your name so that means that you want one document with two shapes and the same content but once rotated to the right and rotated to the left for the other shape for this you need this uh, you need the support for this writing direction um, so once um, um, this uh, BTLR uh, direction was working in, in um, table saws and frames, it looks like basically the rendering is done, but there are, there are more things to support. Uh, one is the cursor traveling. Uh, when you um, um, reach your cursor, um, a saw which has this writing direction, then uh, for, um, based on, for example, Japanese text, you expect that we won't interpret your, uh, your arrow button, um, 
arrow keyboard events uh, literally, but there is the logical level and the physical level, which means that in these tags, the physical up arrow actually means that in the document model, you logically want to move to the right. And when you press the left, then it should be in the, in the document model, you actually would like to move up to the previous paragraph and so on. Um, similarly, um, when you do a selection, then you expect that you just um, create a selection that spans over two document model positions, and when you create uh, the selection, then there is this uh, cursor overlay that shows you what uh, span in the uh, document model you selected, and you expect that just because the, the content, the, like the render text is rotated, then the, this cursor overlay should be also rotated and match your text. But if you don't do anything explicitly, then the cursor overlay will stay as is and it will look funny. Um, also, just because you have some document which is rendered properly and you have your cursor traveling sorted out and selection working, it does not mean that when you interactively modify the document, it will behave correctly. For that to work, it is necessary that whenever you uh, edit the document, like type on the keyboard, um, then some um, part of the document will be invalidated and repainted, and those repaint uh, events have to work with the correct rectangle and you need to do the rotation from the physical level to the logical level and backwards correctly. Otherwise, we will repaint some area which was already correct, and we won't repaint some other area, which will mean that your cursor will move, but the actual text content won't update as you type. Um, with this sorted out, um, we probably want to save this file and we expect that once uh, um, you load the document, load the file back to the in-memory document model, then your writing direction is still there. Um, the problem there is that ODF relies on XSL uh, to define what are the possible uh, writing directions, and um, we use a very, very old XSL um, version in the ODF spec at the moment. Uh, which does not support this writing direction. Uh, so at the moment, this is going to the LibreOffice extension namespace, and then in some future moment, it will be possible to just write it normally, similar to the other directions. Once ODF was working, um, it's also um, useful if um, the word filters are updated, given that it's Word that has support for this. Um, so um, first the docx, the binary doc, and the RTF filter is now updated, both import and export to deal with this. Um, in case of Word, this is mostly uh, table cells is one thing, and then we have two cases with uh, the shapes, where you have uh, some shape and the shape text, and also the case when we have this writer text frame, which is uh, interesting from the export point of view, because you can have a writer text frame with content and also shape with some text, but when we import, then all of these constructs are uh, they do have the same markup in, in the word formats, so when we import them, it's always shaped with some text. That's basically what's working. Um, I can give you some short um, demo, I think. So, The way this works is that you want to have some dummy text, or maybe that's too much, something like this, and let's say you insert the table. It's a bit rare, it's remote control, I'm looking at that monitor too. Is there something? Um, so this would be the normal text, and then 
let's try this kind of Japanese direction where um, you say it's vertical but from top to bottom so that would be it you see this is where we start and go down to the end of the line and then right to left so it's top to bottom and then right to left and or we can even leave the content there and we need to somehow get rid of spy check and then we go to the vertical bottom to top thing and it works um, what we used to have in place was uh, much much worse uh, in that case uh, no I don't want to say this Um, what uh, used to be the case was um, that you can do a rotation on a character level and as long as your whole text content is a single line, like not mu no multiple paragraphs, no mu multiple lines, actually not even multiple text portions, just, just a few words, then it looks like it's working. And you can get away with, with that for a few years and then sooner or later somebody notices is that uh, this is not actually working. So the first thing is, um, when working on this, it was the document model. It was like finding the right place where this can be stored. It's like uh, moving around with your Super Mario character, and you try to not break anything, and just just introducing this little, little thing. And um, actually, this is not too complex. Uh, what, uh, what happens is that in Edit Engine, we have an enumeration for the possible writing directions. And um, you can just add a new enumerator at the end. And then you need to find the places where this enumeration is handled and then find out how to handle your new case um, when, when this new direction is used. Um, there was one uh, one tricky part there because the last enumerator is called this is the end like this is the last one and of course there was some code which was already not using this um, this end when um, and uh, when it iterating through the various um, possible writing directions uh, which means that the code was already in some inconsistent case and you now have to touch it and then you don't know what you break so I did it in two stages first um, I tried to fix up these places um, which already did not support all the existing writing directions and once that was done there then it's really just adding a new enumerator at the end um, also um, it's important that this limitation was was um, only inside writer. So VCL itself is happy to um, draw text in either direction, no matter if you rotate to the left or rotate to the right. Um, it just really wants an angle, and it doesn't matter if this is uh, 19, 90 degrees or 270 degrees. That was already working. Like you can have this in calc already. Uh, that that was uh, nothing new. So what was missing is the writer piece. Um, also, then it was necessary to extend the Uno API for this. Where touching the UNO API, which means that you deal with painful compatibility, like this large clock, which had some nice way to put it on the wall, and you have the new, new clock, which is actually working, and then you stitch the two together, and it's ugly, but it's compatible. This is typically our UNO, uh, UNO API. Uh, now, the good news here is that um, this writing mode, for at least for the writer case, is already a set of um, published uh, constants. So that's something you can actually extend. It's um, a bit painful to use, but at least um, you can extend that without um, compatibility concerns. Uh, and then the layout. Yeah. So actually, I. Um, I started working on this already. I thought back, it, it was six years ago, and it was the layout where I just gave up. And I went for some short workaround for that specific case. Uh, because um, for the layout to work, 
at least uh, for when, when you add um, one, one of these new writing directions, it's like you need to do a lot of changes in one step. You can't really break down to subtasks. And once and the very end it compiles, then you start LibreOffice, and either it works or nothing, nothing shows up on the screen, and then you have to debug it. But it's very hard to do it in small steps. You really just, there is about like um, 100 lines of code or something like that that you just need to write it. And it has to be bug free, otherwise nothing is showing on the screen. And, and you can't split this to some more incremental stuff. Um, so first, what we already had. Um, we had, there should be some, some yeah, somewhere, somewhere I, I have a list of what's that's the existing direction we support. But basically what we have, we have the, the normal Latin script or Latin direction. We had this, what I call the Japanese direction. Um, we had this traditional Mongolian direction, and that's it, just this tree. Uh, what I added was this fourth one uh, for this bottom to top direction. And what we have is that uh, we have this um, writer rectangle function collection, which means it's, a, it's an abstraction you can use to describe that in, in, in some abstracted way or logical way, I want to, let's say, count the difference of two horizontal directions, like logically horizontal. And then, you know, the direction itself should know how to do this in a physical way. So that means if I want to um, compare two horizontal positions in, for some Latin text, that means that the right position is always larger than the left position, which means that I need to extract the left from the right. But from bottom to top, that means that the bottom value will, actually, the horizontal position will be physically a vertical position. And also between the vertical positions, it will be um, the, the left, what's logically left, will be the larger value. And the logical right will be the smaller value. So I still need to subtract the two values, but the order is different. Um, and stuff like this. And there is some, basically this is an array of function pointers, something like um, 60 operations or something like this. And once you put all of these um, in and you do it correctly, uh, easiest if you just count it on the paper and then based on that you, you put it in, then after some struggling it's actually working. Um, this is one thing. The other thing is that we have uh, lots of Boolean flags in this SW frames, which is the building block for pages and paragraphs and everything in Writer. Um, if, if this is a horizontal or vertical frame, if this is vertical, if this is uh, left to right or right, uh, right to left, and now we have this uh, last mode where it's not enough that it's vertical and left to right, but it's not top to bottom, but it's bottom to top. Uh, so all in all, um, oh yes, and one more thing is that um, part of the code uses this abstraction, and that means once, um, once your um, rectangle function collection is implemented, it just works. But there are some other code which is uh, using these um, um, operations directly, which means that first you have to swap the rectangle, like swap the height and the width, and then do your um, work, and then swap it back. So uh, we might need to um, do the swapping for just uh, horizontal or vertical positions. We might, like, the, the really just integers. Or we might work with a 2D point, or we want to have um, a rectangle for this swapping. Um, and then we have the different writing directions, and you might want to convert from physical to logical or the other way around and the rectangle might be already swapped or not. So that means just for one direction, it's like 12 cases. Um, and then, of course, uh, the support for this new direction was, was needed as well. So it's a bit tricky, but this is the really the, 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 the challenging part of this. Once this was sorted out, then the rest, the rest is actually more like um, just following what the other directions already do, and, and um, it's, it's not that tricky. Um, so yeah, it's working, as you saw it. 
uh, what else about how this is implemented. Um, as mentioned, the ODF filter can't just use the, the BTLR markup because this, that would be too new XSL. Um, and the problem is that we don't really have support for this scenario in the ODF filter where you have some uh, UNO property with a given enumeration, we map to an XML attribute, but depending on the actual value, we use either a stock namespace or an extension namespace. Uh, so you can't just uh, nicely add one more item to some static array and be done with the audio filter. You need to explicitly check for this direction. And if that's it, then you need to use the extension namespace. Uh, hopefully, on the, in the long run, this just goes away. Uh, then, uh, updating the, the word format was actually quite uh, quite easy and. Like we all like when you can just delete 100 lines of code and add two instead and it works better. So once I was able to delete this start and end miserable hack for unsupported direction, yeah, that, that was doing this character level rotation and then on the export it tried to detect what this mangling, how it was done and undo that and then write it to the file format. So all of this can be just deleted and instead locate where the Japanese direction is handled and just one more case with the opposite rotation and that's it. So that, um, that, was, um, that was nice. What else? How to test this? Um, so the obvious candidate is the filter task. So for each file format, you can just manually produce some document, load that, assert that you have the correct writing direction, do a round trip, and assert again. Um, but uh, I also wanted to uh, test this at a layout level, like how, how the exact rendering um, uh, looks like because uh, if I export to PDF from Writer and then from, from Word, then I can do this nice vector level um, uh, diffing between the two outputs and make sure that really at web level um, our um, output for some simple rotated text is exactly matching what Word does. And this actually found some, uh, some baseline positioning problem where, like, you just have a coordinate where to paint text, but it's not, not obvious if if that should be the top right or the baseline or the bottom, uh, bottom, well, top left bottom baseline or bottom left corner of the text. So of course, uh, at first iteration, I did not get that right. But um, after being able to test it this way, then then it was um, possible to track down why we have this different offset. Um, and also uh, with um, with writer has this UI uh, test suite um, still in the inside in in CPP unit. Then um, there you can test what invalidation rectangles we issue, and based on that you can assert that um, we actually inv invalidate the correct area when typing. Um, and for the real UI dialogues, then we have this nice UI testing. You can uh, do that. Um, yeah, then for the user interface, um, uh, the table cells and this uh, writer tax frames have totally different um, user interface, but in both cases it was reasonably um, logical to where to add one more uh, UI, like one more item to a um, UI list box, and, and that's how the user can actually create uh, a new table cell or, or text frame or shape text or whatnot uh, with this writing direction. Um, with the specifications part, um, I just asked Andras to please send me this proposal. It's, it's really easy. You just need to update this new RxSL reference in the Spark, and then it will be possible to uh, just uh, use BTLR for the writing direction. I guess we need to. I, I guess it's. Uh, um, I already missed the 1.3 vote, so in some seven years it will be in the Spark, and then we can get rid of our extension namespace. Um, and that's about it. Uh, usually, the, at the end, there is some thank you slide for the customer who paid for this, but I, this is an exception. Uh, we used to have uh, some hack week in, um, in February, where for one week you could do something interesting. And um, this was something that was on my to do for several years. And I, I, I remember that I've heard this once, so I was curious if 
maybe over the years you learn some experience and maybe if you attack the same problems one more time, maybe this time you succeed. And yeah, I was more lucky this time. Um, so the takeaway is that um, uh, this is working for for, two, uh, for headers of table rows, also in tax frames and shape text. And um, we have a global office a snapshot which already has this working. Um, most of this work is already shaping in LibreOffice 6.3. Um, you can't create uh, uh, text frames with this writing version. That, that means the, the deadline or feature freeze. So it will be in the next 6.4. And yeah, that's it. If there was anything in the slide and it was too fast, uh, they are up um, and they will be also on the conference side. So thanks for listening. Um, I'm not really dealing great with time, but if there is some question, yeah, uh, one question. Yeah, Thor. Um, it's a, so the question was uh, how RTO text is playing in this game. Uh, that's a different level. Um, so at this level, uh, when I say Latin text uh, and I say that it's left to right, actually it might be right to left, but because that's just uh, um, at the text portion level. So we don't really worry about that. We, at, at, at this level, we don't have a separate writing direction for, for uh, scripts like Arabic. Um, because that's basically handled for VC, uh, handled in VCI, so that's not a problem for writer. I did not try write to love scripts with with this rotation, so I don't know how that works. If you are lucky, then it works out of the box. Otherwise, let's wait for the first bug report. <laughs> no, I'm not. Thinking. I'm running out of time. Thanks again.